Previously, we've looked at how we can select and manipulate our objects in Blender, but that can only get us so far. The really interesting stuff happens when we edit the object's data. To see the difference between the two, let's take a closer look at the outliner. Here we have the three objects in our default scene, the camera, the cube, and the light. But each of them have a drop-down arrow next to them, and if we expand that, then we can see that there's actually something inside of each of the objects. The top level orange icon represents the object, and the lower level green icon represents the object's data. We've looked at the object have a little bit in the previous lessons when we looked at the location, rotation, and scale properties, and these properties are going to be similar across all different types of objects. The camera has a transform as well as relations, collections, and so on, but so does the cube, and so does our light. The data properties, on the other hand, are specific to the type of object. For example, lights contain light data, and if we click on the green outline icon in the outliner, then we'll jump over to the light data properties. This is where we can change things that are specific to light objects. For example, which type of light it is, what color it is, how strong it is, and so on. Of course, an object like a camera wouldn't need those types of settings. So if we select our camera object and stay in the data tab, we'll be editing the camera settings instead, which is where we can change the camera specific settings like the focal length and the depth of field. To make the distinction between the object and the object data a little bit more clear, I'm gonna create a new camera. I'll do that by hitting Shift A, going down to camera, and that'll add it inside of our cube. So then I'll hit G and move this off to the side, rotate over a little bit, and let's have it roughly focusing on our cube. All right, then I'll just stay in top view. And here we have a camera on the left and a camera on the right. So I'll name them accordingly. Let's say I want the one on the right to stay over here. So I'll call it camera right. Then for the one on the left, I also want it to stay there. So I'll call this camera left. The camera data inside of the camera left object is called camera.001 because it can't have the same name as the camera rights data. Let's say this one we want to act like a zoom lens. So I'll set the focal length to something higher like 120 millimeters. Then I can also change any of these other settings like the depth of field or the clip start and end. I won't go into all of what these settings do just yet, but just change some settings even at random. And let's go ahead and call the camera data for this one 120 millimeter lens. Then let's go to camera right and edit the camera data inside of that object. I'll set the focal length to something much smaller like 25 millimeters. And I'll call the camera data for this one 25 millimeter lens. All right, now what we can do is actually swap out the data between these two objects. So if I select the camera on the right, I can use this drop down next to the name of the data and switch this over to 120 millimeter lens. And now both of these share the same settings. I can also go to the camera on the left and swap out that data for the 25 millimeter lens. This really is like swapping out lenses between two cameras. The objects themselves have all the same settings, the location, the rotation, and the relations haven't changed. It's just the camera specific settings which have. I know this might seem a little bit abstract at this point because you're just getting started, but this is one of the most important concepts in Blender. And if you understand it early on, then so much of how Blender behaves will just make sense. But I'm guessing that at this point, you wanna do a little bit more than just changing camera lenses. We've looked at the camera data as well as the light data, but we haven't really checked out the mesh data. And that's because the most important part of the mesh data is of course the shape of the mesh, but that's not really something that we can edit in the properties editor. We have all of these properties related to the mesh, but nothing that tells us what the shape of the mesh is itself. That's because there's not really a good way to represent and edit all of that complex information in a UI like this. So we do that directly in the 3D viewport by selecting an object, and going from object mode to edit mode. Now we have a bunch of different tools in the toolbar. My mouse cursor has changed from a normal cursor to some crosshairs, and I'm able to select and manipulate the individual points of my object. All of the selection and transformation hotkeys are exactly the same as object mode. So I can shift select to select multiple points, which are called vertices. I can left click and drag to box select them, left click into empty space to deselect them, and so on and so forth. We can also use the transform tools in exactly the same way. Or we can use our hotkeys G to grab, R to rotate, or S to scale. The one thing that you'll notice is that if you select a single point and you hit S to scale, nothing's going to happen. That's because vertices have no size. They're just a single, infinitely small point in space. But we don't only have to work with vertices. To switch to edge select mode, just go up to the header and choose the edge icon. Now we can left click on an edge to select it. We can also work with faces, which are the filled in areas between three or more connected edges. 
Now, unlike in some other 3D editing programs, all mesh operations are going to work regardless of what selection mode you're in. For example, if I select two vertices that are connected by an edge, you'll see that the edge in between has also been highlighted. And if I hit S to scale or do any other operation, that's going to be exactly the same as if I had gone into edge select mode, selected that edge, and done the same thing. Similarly, if I go to vertex select mode and select all vertices that are surrounding a face, that face will also be selected. If I go to edge select mode and select all the edges that are surrounding a face, that also works, or I can just select the faces directly. So selection modes in Blender are mostly about convenience, and you can use whichever one is most convenient for selecting the part of the mesh that you're going for. Now, let's say that you've made some changes. I'll just make this a little bit flatter by selecting the top face, hitting G to grab, hitting Z while still in grab mode to constrain that to the Z axis, just like so. And with that big exciting change complete, let's look at how we can edit other objects as well. So let's switch from edit mode to object mode again in the 3D view header on the left. And I'll hit G and then X to move this along the X axis. And then I'll go to add mesh in cube to add a second cube. To edit the shape of this one, I can switch into edit mode again in the 3D view header, or I can simply hit tab. Tab is going to toggle in between edit and object mode. So I can hit it once to jump into edit mode and hit it again to jump back to object mode. Let's practice this a little bit. Let's hit tab to go into edit mode. I'll select a component. I'll use my move tool just to move this along the Y axis. And then I'll hit tab to go into object mode. Then I can move this as a whole. Then let's select our other object, move it as an object, hit tab to go into edit mode, make some adjustment to the individual components, and hit tab to go back to object mode. You can also select multiple objects and go into edit mode for both at the same time, as long as they're the same type of object, but I wouldn't really recommend doing that if you're just starting out because that can get a little bit confusing in terms of organization. So for now, just stick to editing one object at a time. Also, one of the most common mistakes that I see early beginners make is accidentally being in the wrong mode. They might be trying to do an object mode specific operation, but are in edit mode, or they might be trying to do an edit mode specific operation, but are in object mode. So you always have to be sure that you're in the right mode for whichever operation you're trying to do. So knowing which mode you're in is really important. The biggest clues are the fact that you can only select the components of your object and you can't select any other objects, whether that's a mesh object or otherwise, you can't select anything else. The toolbar looks a little bit different and you have some new tools here and your mouse looks like crosshairs instead of a normal mouse pointer like it does in object mode. In the upcoming videos, we'll talk a lot more about the different operations that you can do in object mode and edit mode to really transform your objects into whatever it is that you want to create. But for now, just remember that there's a difference between the object, which is the container for the mesh data, and the mesh data itself. Practice jumping in and out of edit mode a few times and switching between objects. Whenever you have the hang of that, head on to the next lesson.